is an honor for me to have been appointed today <laughs> to introduce NOFAR Director General, Dr. Almadid. So for the past five years, Dr. Mohamed has directed the complete development of NOFAR, including all aspects of his strategic planning, organizational structure, as well as the program design and the, and the artistic design of the facility. Sorry for the biography, I have to read a little bit, but it's okay. So Dr. Al-Madid is the healthcare advisor of His Highness Sher Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani, the personal representative of His Highness the Emir and the president of Qatar Red Crescent. Dr. Mohammed has significantly contributed to the leadership of healthcare in Qatar, including the chair of the Supreme Council of Health Executive Committee and the chair of the committee that established Qatar National Health Strategy. He is considered to be the father of sports medicine in Qatar, where he established the internationally renowned Aspita Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Hospital, serving as the Director General from 2003 to 2012. Dr. Mohamed also established the National Anti-Doping Commission in 2005 and the Qatar Anti-Doping Lab Laboratory in 2012. In addition, Dr. Mohammed has made significant contribution in Qatar humanitarian initiative, including through his service as vice president of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent. His many contributions to human welf welfare are widely recognized, and he has been honored by several organizations worldwide. But if there is one thing to know about Dr. Mohammed, apart from all his job titles, is that he has the power to believe in, in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. And for that, I thank you. So I hope you will all enjoy the conference and learn as much as possible from our international guests and local guests. And should you need anything, please don't hesitate to approach us. We are very uh, easygoing. So thank you. And I would like to invite Dr. Mohammed now. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid Mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I was here to man habbet arahab fikum. I would like to, sorry, I was, I think I need to say it in English. <laughs> I would like to welcome everybody here. And uh, this is our first international conference. And uh, we chose this subject. I think Jeff is going to address all these technical dimensions, but it's a, uh, I think our experience for the last, I think, couple of years or something like this, that we find opioid is, is quite uh, challenging in this society. I, I think there is some kind of uh, formalities they have to do, but I think it's, uh, it's not just formalities. I think it's, you have to give credit to where credit should be. Uh, this project started with uh, His Highness Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani, and uh, is the person that asked us or asked me to, to start. And we set up a center of excellence here in Qatar. And that's what the, the mission is, to set up a center of excellence for the population of Qatar in, uh, for uh, addiction uh, patients. We also have to thank uh, the prime minister. Actually, he was uh, very instrumental in this project when we faced problem with budgets and when we start to do the legal dimensions and the immediate decrees. So they were very instrumental. And uh, Dr. Hanan, the Minister of Health, also been with us and supportive all the time. You know, never received a message, did not come back and supported it. And she w would have been with us today, but she's in uh, Geneva with the World Health Organization uh, Assembly. So, uh, but we have Dr. Mohammed representing her uh, here. And uh, we have also to thank the Ministry of Interior uh, you know, the uh, drug, uh, director of drug enforcement unit and, and all the leadership there because they were really very instrumental. There was a, a changing mindset here. Uh, and I will address that a little bit later. Then we have other uh, partners from Hamad Medical Corporation, Sidra, Qatar University. Uh, but also we'd like to thank our patient that we worked with and I, I will tell you how we worked it, although we just opened the uh, last Wednesday here. I mean, we moved the patient because we have a temporary facility. Uh, but I have to say, 
this is, uh, you know, Sheikh Jassim was with us from the beginning, as I said, but he was also all the time coming in and working with us and really challenging us on uh, the model of care and the service uh, delivery model. Uh, it's have been there, met with the team all the time. Uh, and uh, so what we've done, you know, when I was asked, I think, five to six years ago that I was uh, to, to set up this facility, uh, I really thought it was easy. You know, I've set up other healthcare facilities. We've done it in sports medicine. We've done it in uh, uh, antidobal laboratory. This is a very sophisticated kind of uh, facilities. And I thought, okay, this is uh, an addiction. I, I've done psychiatry when I did my medical school. It was three years, a three months course. And this is just a small thing. So I thought, okay, can't be that sophisticated. And I was proven wrong. There was a lot of challenges there. Uh, first, there was, uh, what we found, there was a lack of knowledge between me and my team. We had our team, me, Justin, Bala, and uh, Vijay was there, and Fatma, and so when we started, and we started reviewing the literature, we tried to, we went to visit, and this, and then, there was really a challenging issue. We find that this is not black and white, and can never be black and white. I mean. Remember, sports medicine, if you have a hamstring strain of second degree, you expect it three weeks and, you know, predictable outcomes. That's, that's good for us. You can design your protocols, you design everything. And pa patients usually cooperative, uh, interactive. They, they want to come back. They go back to, to their fields, go back to their uh, things. Also, the laboratories are very precise. It's, it's, it's a process oriented. It's, it's easy to develop, if you want the truth. Now we see it uh, retrospectively. It's much easier, rather than when you have a lot of uh, subjective dimensions. You see, in, uh, I worked in humanitarian field, as Diana said, for a long time, nearly 20 years now. And in healthcare as well, and we did policies. I worked as a physician as well. We've seen patient close. But Although I was a DG here, I'm not involved in the clinical dimension, the patients here are challenging, really challenging. They challenge your time, they challenge your emotion, they challenge your compassion. I don't know how they, get, they do get my number, you know? And I really start discovering that there is boundaries for compassion. And I have to apply it for my own, I don't know, my own emotional sanity, if you want to call that. Uh, there is a lot of psychiatrists, a lot of psychologists here, so take me at face value. You can analyze me now, you know. But so what we've done, we, we started at that. We, we brought an advisory group from Qatar and from abroad. We, we brought a multidisciplinary team together, and we start a discussion with them, a lot of workshops together, and, and, and we decide until we identify, because the problem is we have no statistics. We don't know what's going on. So how do you supply something if need is not defined? Okay, and I have to remember Brahim Smeikh, uh, who was with us, one of that team, and he passed away in, uh, 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 during that period from natural causes, and uh, we're gonna dedicate something for him in the garden hopefully within the next couple of uh, weeks. So we had to do a lot of reviews. We reviewed our Qatar National Vision 2030. Okay, it's, this is the general that things you need to do. It's about human development. And then we fused, uh, reviewed the Qatar National Health Strategy. It's really, uh, you know, it's all about uh, providing care related to need, it's, it's about being there, it's about quality, it's about delivery, it's about uh, you push for uh, community base, you... But remember, when you put a strategy, 2011, 2016, related to that environment at that stage of the healthcare system as well. You don't, you don't. So we went to the sea and we, we reviewed, the first thing we had to review is the legal environment, okay? how NOFAR is gonna exist in that legal environment at that time. 
And what we identify that the legal environment was developed for the last few decades since started, always by the Ministry of Interior and Security Services. Okay, so it started from that point of view. It was seen as a, a security issue. It was seen as a, from a criminal kind of dimension, and you don't blame them for that. So we came to them and said, listen, we have to change this mindset. And I have to say, from the Minister of Interior to all the staff, everybody, they were really supportive of this. And I, was, I thought that would be a challenge for us to, to face. So a group was set up. The whole definition have changed. Uh, it was defined as disease. It was defined as this is the Ministry of Health that it is, uh, will be responsible, accountable. This is why NOFAR is uh, legally part of the uh, Ministry of Health, although it's have its own uh, independent. And uh, another thing is that confidentiality of the patient here. And they can't access, nobody can access this without a court order. That's how the laws uh, comes in. And uh, it gave us a lot of authority in prevention, treatment and wellness, rehabilitation, social uh, reintegration, education, training, support legislation, and research. Even legislations, we, we can initiate and we can push and, and we can do this. So that's, I think, a great uh, kind of uh, Amiri decree. So with this work group, what we have done, we we develop what we thought as a need. So we have to do a lot of guess, guessing. So we did the guesstimate, and everybody was uh, comfortable of how the format will be and what kind of uh, format, even of the model, how the care will be provided, and, and these kind of things. And we also thought about that uh, this is sh will have wellness in it. Environment have to be also about a wellness environment, uh, and care have to be provided based on, uh, uh, on evidence. At the same time, it will be delivered by a multidisciplinary team. We did a lot of workshops, and we continued these workshops and refined them again and again as our team was increasing in size. Because remember that time you start, you know, when construction starts, and you know there is a commitment for the project, you start bringing your team. And by that time, we are all the time when we feel that there is a good, uh, the type of people that you are there, you, you come back and refine because you need to dr drill your team and drill uh, what you call it, uh, that model and, and service delivery, you, you need to drill it as well more and more until you refine it. And we usually, we, we take the phase from project phase to commissioning phase. And actually, project phase, when you start and you define your project, you define this, and construction starts. Commissioning phase you start when you, OK, now construction is on the way. Now I need to plan and start my operational dimensional thing. And you start bringing people until it's open. And then it's an operational phase. So uh, technically, today is an operational phase, but it is not, because we've been working in a uh, in a satellite uh, facility of 17 villas somewhere. Uh, there was uh, some kind of delay in the project two years ago. Uh, so what we have done, we talked to the Minister of, uh, of Health and this. There was a temporary center called MAN, part of the Ministry of Health. And Al Awain was part of uh, Qatar Foundation. And uh, we have an offer team by that time. So we said, OK, what do we do now? I mean, we're not going to give. If we leave our people like this, the people get fed up and, and they will go. Or they just sit down, nothing. So we, we put all these together. So we have three teams now through uh, three type of models and way of thinking, ways of operations. And, and that was a challenging times, you know? to try to bring everybody together, trying to, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, vent or you know, really look at every individual. Are they, uh, OK, do they fit with us or not? And some of them need to be developed, so we have to make individual plans and, and these kind of things. So that was quite some time ago. It was challenging, but I think we are reaching there somewhere. 
so I know Jeff is going to address this as a, as a again. I mean, he's always in the back of my mind. He's, okay, and uh, but we uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's hospitality witness and it's a multidisciplinary uh, approach, uh, clinical care, and uh, we have assessment of patient, residential daycare, aftercare, and sustained engagement. Another challenging things we faced. Okay, is that Qatar is a conservative society. Okay, and Islam is a plays a major role uh, within our lives. Okay, so we had to identify what's the concept there. We have to identify how do we approach these guys. So we've done workshops with uh, Sheikh Badr. He's here also and uh, with the rest of the team trying to understand. And I think there is two concepts there that we, we, we identify. One within Islamic uh, teaching is that God is forgiving for as many times as there is. You need to do that. For whatever the reason there is, the doors are open all the time, every minute. But you have to be sincere, and you really want to do that and you make an effort to, to give it up. The second concept is that the, the, the self is divided into three parts. They call it the ordering, uh, the ordering self, the uh, repenting self, and self in peace. The self in peace is, this is you are in complete harmony with yourself and, and peace because you, there is no guilt, nothing. You feel that you don't commit any sins or you don't do any wrongdoings, at least from your own uh, teaching or all your own studies. Because guilt is a great thing that people feel, and our patients do feel that. I mean, but it's not just for them. All of us as individuals, when we do something wrong, we do have that feelings. And they have to understand that this is also part of life, that you will do things and you might feel... Uh, you know, feel guilty about it, and that's where repenting self is. Your conscience is alive. Okay, you, you are in trouble, you've done something wrong, or you are really in deep trouble. You think there is no way back, but actually what's happening to you is, is part of life. And we all go through it. Okay, something more than others, but at the end of it, it's, I think it's the same principle in a way. So you know that as long as you're conscious and you are in fighting with this, you are, you are okay. You're still there, you know? You don't want them to come to the ordering self. The ordering self is that, that's it, you give up. That is what it means. You do whatever you do, you don't care. But it's not conscious there, it's not hitting you to say, okay, this is wrong, you have to fix it, you cannot continue in this. So this is where we want to keep them. And we want to push them uh, further. This is, I think, is uh, so. From there, we we developed our mission, and is to assist people with behavioral disorder to achieve and sustain the quality of life they aspire for in a healing environment using evidence-based practices. And our vision is to recognize a center of excellence within three years from opening. I have to say, hopefully, that in October, or by October, I think I can't use anything, I mean, in or out or whatever, is that uh, we'll have CARF accreditation uh, visit. Hopefully, by then, we will have it. So we put values there, dignity, trustworthy, compassion, team and synergy, teamwork and synergy, excellent hospitality, and person centers. You need to read it again and, and think about it in our settings, how appropriate in that. I mean, this slide took, took a long, a long time to develop, and a lot of energy, a lot of discussion, a lot of things on the wording and, and every part. OK. But you see, remember when His Highness asked me to set up this place, and I was discussing with this with my team, about center of excellence. You see, organization and excellence, in a strategic sense, you need to concentrate on one of these three.
but does not mean that if you give focus to one that you, the others, you forget. You have to do all three of them. My own belief, actually, that I will push all of them. But definitely, if you think about it, I'll describe them. Then you think what NOFR should be. OK? So product leadership is like Apple. They are really all the time thinking about products. So they need a lot of research and a lot of innovation. OK? And then another one, which is customer intimacy, this is where the customer integrate with the organization. You, you integrate them into the organization and to identify and work up their needs and what kind of solution, working it together and, and, and to, to help them to, to, to fix their solution. This is usually in services-oriented organization. And then the last thing is that operational excellence. Uh, and this is, you know, uh, it's, it's a... It's, it's like a machine. It's like the Walmarts and you know, the supermarket. There is processes, and you have to make it very efficient, very effective. And uh, this is a diagram for that. And you can see it's about strategy and how do you implement the strategy in. And you have to, how do you work your team to develop this strategy? And then how you push it inside the organization. And then you have to, you know, uh, put a lot of processes in place and policies and whatever. So it's the mechanical things. The organization as a machine working very effective and, and, uh, and very efficient. But then you have to have this performance uh, management is really how do you measure that? Using key performance indicators uh, or balance scorecards. And so you, you need to measure all the time to, to know where you are from that strategy. And is that strategy aligned also? You know, you don't want your operation independent of, uh, of your strategy. You need them all to be aligned. And then you need to work your team. And this is the difference between the machine and this. You need your team to be a high performance uh, working team. It's about developing a culture, a mindset. You need to know that the quality is there, the quantities is there, and they are working together in, in, in a good uh, format. Uh, so we go back to these three, and people from Nofer should think about it in a way. In product leadership, we actually have Justin and his team. Their mindset is like this. Justin was the, he's our CEO, and he was a director of research departments. He's always in his mind, sometimes come back to us with, a lot of systems say, OK, what do you think? We can push this system or that system. That's his mindset. And that's good. For the operational excellence, we've got uh, BALA and the corporate planning team. They are pushing all this for the operational excellence all the time. And for the customer intimacy, we can see it with Jeff and his team. They're always pushing you know, for this kind of integration or something like this. But as an organization, where is our first focus? It's really, it's the customer intimacy. That's where I think it's, it's there, and the others are there just pushing as well. I hope the other two guys don't take it uh, negatively. You know, it's like. so, so what's our philosophy? In our philosophy in management, and you can link this to what we've said before, we have three major things. One, we manage strategically. OK, it's, we don't manage in a way that it is day to day or point to point. Everybody will be doing their bits. So, and we, so we establish an Office of Strategic Management. This is actually a well understood methodology of Office of Strategic Management. It's, we didn't invent it. And we using the KPIs, balance scorecards, we talked about this from an excellent organizations. So we have, uh, and, and they address usually four points, major points. Your financial situation, how are you? Are you getting into debts? Are you, you know, how are you work? Depend on, but it's about your financial situation. Second point is about your internal processes and policies are they addressed. And then it's about human resources. If your human resources are 
under development or they are satisfied, and so you do surveys on, on these kinds of things. And the, third, the last one is about your customers and other stakeholders. Do you, do you impact them? Do you have the results? Do, are they satisfied? It's all these kinds of things. And you can measure all these through the Office of Strategic Management. Then transparency, you, you know, it's about governance structure. I don't think this is auditing systems or whatever. But then empowerment. Empowerment is very important in any organization. That to me is, okay, you've got your policy, you've got all this, to, it's a control mechanism. But then you allow people to, to see how they do it within these boundaries. It's not, if you take the decision, the highest up, you actually destroy an organization. People should know where they're going, but then they can walk it, they can drive it, they can, you know, they can drive, but they can ride the bicycle, it's up to them. You have to allow that uh, on the ground kind of things for your director, your, you know, your managers, your head of sections, and down there. So it's been an, a journey for us for quite some time. And we actually have to congratulate our teams, really, for we have our first patient in the new facility is in, uh, in Wednesday, last Wednesday. So it's quite uh, some time. So you are coming to, and I don't say working site or construction site, it's, uh, but it's the end of stages. So forgive us if you see things that it is it's there or some tapes are there or some things don't open. Keep your phone with you if you're in toilets or something like this, if you're locked in. Anyway, so it had been a journey. But you know, journeys to excellence is not an end. It's not you go there somewhere and uh, there is a place called excellence. The journey itself is, have to be, a way of life that you are traveling in excellence. And hopefully, this is the culture we need to create here. Thank you very much.